September 15th, 2008 is the day Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. It was not deemed too big to fail, and instead, it failed, and contributed to the implosion of financial markets that deepened the recession of 2008 and ended up leading to the great financial crisis as the mortgage market melted down. Today, comparisons are being made that a company called Credit Suisse or Credit Swiss or Swiss Bank, so depending on how you want to call them, is potentially at a Lehman Brothers moment. That this bank potentially, with many more assets under management than Lehman Brothers at the time in 2008, could potentially go bankrupt. And if it goes bankrupt, it could be even more impactful than the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers. So if you remember people leaving their offices with boxes because their company went bankrupt in Manhattan, that might happen again. So let's go through some of the madness that people are expecting regarding Credit Suisse and this potential Lehman Brothers moment. This is a bank, by the way, that for years, if not potentially decades, has been involved in scandals and potentially misleading their clients, their wealth management clients, their investors about the safety of particular products they were investing in, especially bond portfolios, which have absolutely been obliterated in recent months. That's because most bond portfolios are down 40% and some bond portfolios are down 50 to 80%. And Credit Suisse is really no exception here. The problem is, we have a bunch of compounding issues at Credit Suisse that could actually lead to not only the substantial reduction in valuation of the company and share price, but the potential ultimate bankruptcy. A lot of it is being compared to the scandals that Deutsche Bank went through in 2016, especially since just last year, Credit Suisse took one of the largest losses from the implosion of Archegos Capital Management, when Bill Huang basically 20x leveraged his hedge funds portfolio and ended up losing all of it, potentially leveraging up to $160 billion, and Credit Suisse taking some of the largest losses from that disaster. So, what do we know about Credit Suisse, and how is Credit Suisse different from Lehman Brothers? Well, that is what we're going to start with. Then we'll move into what's potentially happening within the internal structure of Credit Suisse and what could come out of that. And why is all of this becoming a problem now in the first place? We'll go through everything. First, let's compare Credit Suisse to Lehman Brothers. One thing that's important to remember is that Lehman Brothers, this is probably the most important aspect, is Lehman Brothers had over $600 billion worth of credit default swaps and even though that sounds really fancy, the way I want you to think about that is if you have $1 of real estate, think about a credit default swap as representing about $10 of real estate. So if your $1 doubles, you double $10. Instead of having an extra $1, you would actually have an extra $10. That's the power of leverage via a credit default swap, which is a derivative. Think about it kind of like trading weekly call options, okay, for those of you option traders. Or think about it like going to the roulette table and picking a number, <laughs> all right? So that's a credit default swap. It works great when you're winning and you're hitting the right number. It works really poorly when things are collapsing. And that's what happened with the great financial crisis is the real estate market, the underlying fundamentals of the real estate market collapsed. That's because people had been buying homes with no income, no job, no assets known as in ninja loans. People were coaxed into short-term variable rate loans that started with interest rates at negative percent rates or potentially 0% teaser rates that adjusted within six months to market rates, which were like five or 6%. Uh, and, and many people couldn't afford their payments, they couldn't refinance their homes as they were promised, so they let homes go into foreclosure, which led to the collapse in valuations of real estate products and real estate portfolios. And when real estate came down 40%, all of a sudden that $1, which was actually $10, became more like, uh-oh, a $6 loss because of that leverage aspect, potentially an infinite loss. 
of, uh, or a complete loss, I should say, rather than an infinite loss, a complete loss of those credit default swap contracts is the entire real estate market melted down. And what you ended up with is companies like Lehman Brothers going completely bankrupt and massive losses at other companies like Goldman Sachs or AIG as well, some of which, of course, were bailed out, unlike Lehman Brothers. But how is today different from this Lehman Brothers moment? Well, on one hand, it's very different in that the crisis we're seeing right now is not one based on real estate valuations plummeting. Even though the real estate market is starting to turn down, we're not seeing the insane leverage in the banking and financial system anymore when it comes to credit default swaps related to real estate. However, we are seeing leverage related to bonds. And because the bond market has been getting decimated, we've seen substantial losses at banks because of the bond market. Certainly nowhere near as extreme as what we saw during the great financial crisis because of uh, real estate credit default swaps becoming worthless. But still, substantial losses. And substantial losses are one of the reasons why and the CEO of Credit Suisse, who was actually just appointed back uh, in July to sort of manage a takeover for Credit Suisse, we're sort of restructuring, we should say. Uh, this CEO recently came out and said that the bank is at a critical moment, and the Financial Times has put together multiple pieces about how the culmination of all of the failures of Credit Suisse to manage risk over the past few years. So this new CEO suggests that he is going to announce a turnaround strategy for the bank at the end of October. That turnaround strategy is widely expected to lead to thousands of job cuts and expense cuts. And so what I actually decided to do is go through the investor relations report for Credit Suisse to try to understand, is this just a poorly run bank? Are there problems in the way the company is operating? And is that potentially why we're seeing really scary charts that are circulating on Reddit and circulating on Twitter saying and suggesting that, uh oh, this company's going bankrupt because look, the cost of insuring yourself or your bond portfolio against the default of Credit Suisse has skyrocketed. You can see the line on the right is almost similar to the peak as what we saw in 2008. So in other words, the cost to insure yourself or protect yourself on the right is about the same as the cost to protect yourself in 2008, which is sending the signal that, oh no, it's getting so in expensive to insure ourselves against loss because of credit suites, there must be some serious fundamental issues at the company. And here's just sort of another image of that that's circulating around on Reddit. And so a lot of folks are saying, that's it. That's it. This is Lehman Brothers all over again. See, the cost to insure yourself is so high like in 2008. That's it. The financial crisis is here. And my goal is to try to understand, is there something in the investor relations report that actually shows me, okay, no, this is just a bank that sucks versus a bank that's about to be just sort of the tip of the iceberg for a financial crisis and a financial meltdown. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's take a look at uh, their financials. So the first thing that I noticed that's most important, and I went through this with course members in detail this morning. We went through all of these pages uh, and and did some digging. So this is sort of a quicker or synopsis version of this. And one of the things that we noticed is that in their wealth management division, they had net revenues that had declined 34%. We have a 34% decline in year-over-year -year revenues, which is fine because a lot of companies have actually had these sort of 34% declines. That's because the markets have gone down, less people are trading. So the amount of revenue that you can make through managing other people's money or investment banking services is obviously declining. This is the management division, division which has their revenue down 34%. But what blows my mind and sends me a signal that maybe the problems at this bank are really just one of poor management is the following. Take a look at this section right here. It's called the general and administrative expense section. It usually has to do with things like litigation and payroll expenses, uh, salaries. And the company actually in their report cites exactly these issues, some litigation expenses, but also substantially higher salaries in order to retain talent. And so what's remarkable is while their net revenues declined 34% under wealth management, they actually bloated their general and administration expenses by 43%. 
and their other compensation increased by 9%. So you would think that when all of a sudden your revenues are going down 34%, that you would see a decline in compensation for your bankers uh, or, or the salaries that people are earning or the, just the headcount that you have at the company. But no, the company actually became so bloated that their entire wealth management division, this is their wealth management page, their entire wealth management division actually lost roughly $100 billion or 96 billion francs. It's almost a one-to-one. -one. So if you hear me say dollars or Swiss, Swiss francs, they're roughly the same. They're about one-to-one. -one. But that's not even that bad. What's actually worse is that if you jump over here to the investment bank side, you could see the same thing happening here a 40% decline in revenues for uh, the investment bank matched by compensation expenses that increased, uh, or sorry, general and administrative expenses that increased 31% and compensation expenses that increased 10%. Why does that make sense? To where all of a sudden a bank that used to be profitable under the investment banking side, well, at least in the first quarter they were profitable, in the second quarter lost $1.1 billion in just one quarter while they're paying these massive freaking salaries and their banking or their investment banking revenue is down 40%. Now, I think this is where it's it was just worth taking a quick little pause and saying, look, if there were some massive issues in terms of like credit default swaps uh, that all of a sudden are becoming worthless, uh, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, like bonds are kind of losing a lot of value, right? Then, then we would expect to see massive write downs on the balance sheet of this company for assets losing a lot of value. But what actually seems to be happening here is their clients, their customers are losing a lot of money and therefore their revenues are declining in wealth management and investment banking while at the same time they're spending more money on people. So, so far what I'm seeing in this report is, is actually not something that makes me think that, oh, uh, this is a company that's losing a lot of money to bad investments. It's actually a company that just sucks at being a business. Remember, one of the biggest things that I say, because obviously you know that I'm starting this company, House Hack, this startup, one of the things that I say leads companies and businesses to bankruptcy is too much staff, too much payroll. And how are you losing 30 to 40% in revenue but growing your your staff and bloating your staff, that, that seems illogical, right? And you could see here sort of one of their disclaimer, primarily due to headcount growth investments is one of the reasons they're seeing this substantial uh, uh, sort of move in, in expenses. But on top of that, they're seeing their clients, or in my opinion, we're seeing their clients uh, getting pissed off. And so you actually see about $2 billion in outflows of customer deposits. So you're seeing people leave the bank. Now, I wouldn't go as far as calling this like a run on the bank. I would just say that people are pissed off probably because Credit Suisse is losing them money. And at the same time, they're having to refinance their debt at a higher interest rate. And you could see that here because they're paying off old debt and refinancing new, which rates are obviously higher. So let's just briefly try to reconcile some of what's going on. So you have losses at the company because of bad risk management, right? So uh, not only did you lose money on Archegos, but you lost money through other scandals and litigation. So you have expensive scandals and litigation. So we can, you know, maybe what we'll do is we'll even write these down just so we can look at this uh, nice and cleanly together here. So we have uh, scandals and risk failures, right? That would be like Archegos. That's, that's the first thing, and that's very expensive. Then uh, they have more employees, right? That's more expense. Uh, and at the same time, revenue is going down. This isn't a sign to me of like a systemic crisis so far in the financial system. It's a sign that this bank sucks, <laughs> right? Uh, now, their losses uh, are leading to withdrawals, right? That also makes sense. Like if you're if you're using them for investment management services and banking services, but then they lose you a lot of money because they parked you into bonds that they thought were safe, like uh, UK gilts, and then all of a sudden they lose 50% in value. Well, you might be a little pissed. <laughs> so you're seeing scandals and risk failure, more employees, more expense, revenue going down, losses leading to withdrawals. Uh, at the same time as all of this, you're having to refinance uh, debt that you have, whoopsies, uh, at uh, at a higher interest rate, 
And the issue again with refinancing at a higher interest rate uh, is you end up having higher interest expenses. So I appear to have lost my page. Oh, here we go. So now you have higher interest expenses, which again leads to more money that's going out of this company's uh, pocket, right? So more interest expense. So really, so far, what we have is a company, again, that is failing to manage its business appropriately. And you could actually see that uh, a little bit by looking at their cash flow statement and how much actual cash they have. So here's how much cash that they have. If you do the math here and you add up their short-term assets, they've got about $353 million in short-term assets. You subtract short-term liabilities of about $90 million. You get to only about $263 million of cash that this company has. $263 million of cash, when you jump on over to the cash flow statement, you kind of start seeing, uh-oh, we are losing $1.8 billion a quarter right now because we suck at operating our company, and that includes interest expense, right? So we're spending $1.8 billion in expenses, but we only have just under $300 million available. Uh, and on top of that, when we consider our operating, investing, and financing activities, we actually just eradicated about $5.3 billion of cash available. We are out of money at this bank. So not only are we sucking, but we're straight up out of cash at this bank. Now, I don't profess to know absolutely everything about this bank, but just by actually looking at the financials rather than just relying on people ranting on Twitter about how things look like 2008, and clearly this is a sign that the end of the world is coming, and this collapse spells the beginning of a great financial crisis 2.0, Rather than just believe that headline nonsense, which, you know, there's headline and then there's detail. I'm a detail person, okay? If you're a headline person, sorry, you're probably going to have some crazy emotions. But, uh, you know, I think by now we should learn that headlines are sensational. Details are what matters. When we actually look at this company, we go, wait a minute. It's no surprise that the company is potentially going to lay off 5,000 workers. I did some quick math, and I think that in order for them to just go back to break even, they actually need to cut more jobs. They need to cut maybe between 7,500 to 10,000 jobs. That would be about uh, 10, well, that'd be about 15 to 20% of their workforce, of so about 50,000, 51,000 individuals worldwide. So this fear that this is the Titanic, you know, and just the beginning of a fleet of crashes, I think is a little over blown. I could see though why people are freaking out because they're looking at a bank that just straight up sucks and it, it sends these signals that maybe there's a larger underlying issue uh, in our economy. But to me, again, uh, this is this is all uh, being created or being exposed, like the bad management of this bank is being exposed because the Federal Reserve is hiking rates extremely aggressively, which is making their interest debt more expensive and is devaluing the bonds of their customers. Their customers are leaving and losing money. The company has too many employees. And it all points back to the Fed. The glory days are over, as the Fed basically is telling us. The Fed's saying, look, the glory days are over. Stop spending money. Tighten your belt. And if you're a bad company, the market's just going to eat you up. The market is going to make you go bankrupt. Unfortunately, this company has seen their market capitalization fall uh, somewhere around 70%. Their stock has just plummeted over the last year. And when you look at their market cap, they've got about a $10 billion market cap. They're trying to raise $8 billion. The only way they could really do that is selling off assets. So now they're thinking about selling off like their trading unit and their Brazil unit, which are massive money losing units anyway. And then if they do end up selling those off, they're still going to have to potentially raise $4 billion from markets. But if you remember, uh, you know, when, when you like right now, today, we, we are in a relative, what I would say, liquidity crunch or crisis globally where there's not a lot of cash uh, to support uh, these sort of bank financing or, or company financing activities where the company goes, hey, we're just going to issue $4 billion of uh, new stock. And so what ends up happening is, much like APE, APE, you end up uh, saying, hey, we're going to dilute shareholders a lot. Well, then what happens uh, to, to the stock? Well, the stock ends up losing 60% of its value in six months, or actually less than six months, in like two months, just like APE did, which is what I warned. The reason I warned that stock, the talk, stock ticker symbol APE would likely fall substantially is because when companies try to dilute their shareholders, 
in a liquidity crisis where people are like, we don't have enough cash, right? We're getting gobbled up in the market. Everybody's wealth is going down. We don't have money to keep supporting the liquidity needs of this company. Then what happens is you end up getting selling pressure that is actually more impactful than it should be because there just aren't enough buyers available at discounted prices. Uh, and that's unfortunately going to lead uh, CS stock, which is Credit Suisse, to, to likely uh, continue its plummet. Now, ironically, uh, even though it's down 59% uh, in the past year and 75% in the past five years, it's actually green today. It's green today at 1.78%, potentially because people think, okay, or are realizing, hey, like this is not the sign of, uh, and the, the market is rising slightly too, with the exception of obviously of Tesla. Um, you know, maybe maybe this is not the sign of a systemic global crisis, but this is actually just a sign of a poorly managed bank. And, and if they can cut their workforce the way the CEO is suggesting, maybe they'll be able to get through this. So these are my thoughts on the Credit Suisse coming disaster. Hopefully this insight helps you. And if you found it useful, consider sharing, uh, in my opinion, what I believe to be the truth <laughs> uh, and subscribe for more. Thanks so much. Bye.